When we're working on the operating system, eventually we're going to start writing files. We could be doing it for something like data science, we could be writing code, we could be modifying files for software. You're going to find yourself at times that you won't necessarily have access to a graphical text editor, and you'll need to know how to work in the operating system in order to create files, read them, update, and delete them. So what we're going to do right now is understand how we do that. So if I ls in my current directory, I can see that I have this ipsum.txt file. Okay. What if I want to see what the deal with this file is? What I can do is I can use the cat command. And if I do cat ipsum.txt and press enter, what cat does is it's going to print out that whole file to my screen so I can see the context. Now, cat is a really great command anytime you have a file and you have a pretty good idea how big it is. If it's a fairly small file, like this is probably small enough where you can read the whole thing with minimal scrolling, cat's probably a pretty good option for you and it's a great way to verify what's inside of a file. However, what if this was an incredibly long file, right? We have a couple of different options we could do. We have the less command, or excuse me, the tail command, and I can pass tail a number. So I'm going to say I only want one. I want one line, essentially. And I'm going to do ipsum.txt, right? And while it looks multi-line when it prints out, that's only because of the width of my actual terminal window. This is only one line of text. So I can pass this multiple numbers. I can pass this a three. And this is giving me the last three lines of the file, OK? So right over here, I can see here's actually one line. A second line is basically this new line, this empty space, and this is actually a third line, okay? Tail is a very valuable command, particularly when we're looking at files where what we care about is towards the bottom of the file. Logs are a very good example of when we would use tail. Typically, we're looking to see what happened most recently, what broke, who just logged into something, and we may have a log file that is thousands and thousands of lines long. By using tail, it gives us a reasonable way to get down to the bottom of the log file to actually see what's going on. But what if we find ourselves in the opposite scenario? What if I care about what's at the top of the file? In this case, what I'm going to do is I am going to type in head. Same concept, and as opposed to tail, I'm going to give it a number, and I'm going to do my ipsum.txt again, and now I'm just getting the first line of the file. So when would I ever want to use head as opposed to tail? Well, anytime you care about what's at the top of a file, that's very, very large. A good example of this is going to be something like a CSV file, something where you have a large table that has table headers. And maybe you just want to know what those table headers are. Head is a great way to get that information very quickly. So these are some good options in order to read files. We could also use one called view. If I view ipsum.txt and press enter, what this is actually doing is this is giving me an interactive way to kind of scroll through a file. This is good to be used when maybe something like cat is going to fill up your entire terminal screen and you want to open up something different and you're not in any danger of actually modifying anything. And when we're done with view, we are just going to press escape colon Q as in Quebec, press enter, and then we're out of view. So those are a few options that we can use anytime we want to read a file. Okay, so what do we want to do if we want to create some new files? Simple enough. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here, and I'm going to use the touch command. I'm going to go ahead and say touch hello.txt. Press enter, and there's a hello.txt file. So the touch command, all it's going to do is create you a new file that you have to work with, okay? And that's pretty much all there is to it. If I wanted to create multiple files, I could do touch, I could do world.txt, I could do duke.txt, note the space in between, and I press enter. And what it did, it created my hello.txt, excuse me, my world.txt, and my duke.txt files. So nothing too dramatic about file creation. Now the real question is, what happens when we come and edit this files? And this is where you might be um, a little bit at a loss, because again, we don't have text editors that we're typically used to when working in the desktop environment. 
So how do we edit files without using a text editor? Well, we're gonna have to use a terminal-based text editor. And note, there are a lot of different terminal-based text editors out there. You have tools like Vim, you have tools like Emacs. There's many different tools, many different flavors that fit many different needs. We're gonna focus today on an editor that's called Nano. Nano comes by default on most Linux distributions, and it's a pretty user-friendly one to start with. So let's go ahead and let's open up our hello.txt file using our nano text editor. To do that, I'm gonna invoke the nano command, and then I'm gonna tell it what file I wanna open. In this case, I wanna open hello.txt, I'm gonna press enter. Once again, we found ourselves in a new situation where we're still in the terminal, but we have a completely different interface. Now we have the actual nano terminal up and running, so let's take some time to explore what's going on here. The great thing about Nano is this. I can just start typing, right? I can just start putting words in here and I don't have to do anything special. I don't have to do any configuration. I don't have to know any special commands. I can just start typing, I can get a new line and I can just type to my heart's contents, whatever I want. That's a really nice thing about Nano, especially as a beginner. Now, Notice at the bottom, another nice thing that makes Nano a pretty useful and user-friendly terminal is it kind of gives you the cheat sheet down towards there. Note down here, this caret is control, okay? So the control modifier is what we're going to need to do. So let's say that I'm very happy with this document that we've just written, and I want to go ahead and save it. We've made modifications, we want to save our work. So if we go down here, a lot of times a word you'll hear that's synonymous with saving something is writing something. So when it says write out, that's what we care about. That's what we want to do to say. So it looks like control O is what we're looking for. So I'll go ahead and hold down my control key and I'll press O as an Oscar. Now we can see the interface change a little bit. We have this nice white bar down here that says file name to write hello.txt. It's asking us, hey, what do you want to name the file you're writing? You're already working in hello.txt, do you just want to save it in that one? And in this case, yeah, that's all we want to do. So there's nothing else to do but simply press enter. Now that we press enter, we see this alert that we wrote three lines, which makes sense because we can see we wrote one line here, we have one line that's empty, and our third line at the bottom. That feels reasonable, that feels good. So how do we get out of this text editor? What we're gonna do is control X as an X-ray down here. So I'm gonna hold on my control key and I'm gonna press X. And now I'm out of the text editor. So seeing is believing, how do I actually verify that the thing that I did actually happened? I'll just use our, one of our commands we used earlier to read the file. I'm gonna go ahead and use cat. So I'll go ahead and type in cat and we will do, um, not ipsum.txt, excuse me, we'll do hello.txt, the one we just created. We'll press enter, and sure enough, there we go. We have that going. Now note, we don't have to necessarily use nano on an existing file. So let's also use nano just to get another repetition under our belt to create a brand new file from scratch. If I just type in nano by itself and just press enter, I'll get a brand new text editor. You can see at the very top it says new buffer, right? So that just means, hey, we're just kind of writing our ideas here on a napkin. We have, we're not committing to anything yet, right? So let's go ahead and write some more text. Write some more text and we're good there. So what do we want to do if we want to save? Same thing, we're going to go down to our little cheat seat down here. We want to write the file, so that is control O as an Oscar. We'll do control O. And now it says file name to write. Note, it doesn't give us a file, because our file doesn't exist yet. So I'm gonna give it a file name of my underscore new underscore file dot txt. I'm gonna press enter. Then you can see at the top, my new file dot txt, it's no longer new buffer, it's been read into existence, and we wrote run line. That's a good question, or excuse me, that's a good, that's a good place to be. And then we're gonna go ahead and do control X as an x-ray to exit and now we're out. So now again, we're gonna cat, we call that mynewfile.txt, and there's our file output right there. Last thing we're gonna do, we've created files, we've read files, we've made updates to files, now we need to delete files. We'll notice that like this duke.txt, this world.txt, they're both files that don't have anything in them. 
So what am I going to do if I want to delete those files? I'm just going to use the rm command. I'm going to rm space duke.txt, press enter, and I'm going to do rm world.txt and enter. So now you have all the skills you need to know in order to create, read, update, delete. Remember, there are tools out there that you could use a terminal or a local text editor like it might be used to, but you always find yourself in situations where that may not be an option. So this is a very good fundamental skill to have anytime you're working in the Linux operating system.